Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning um, and braving the weather. Uh, this morning, I have the pleasure of introducing our great senator. And Senator James Sanders Jr. was elected to the New York State Senate on September 13, 2012. He represents the 10th senatorial district in Queens, which includes the neighborhoods of South Jamaica, Rochdale Village, Rosedale, Richmond Hill, South Ozone Park, Springfield Gardens, and most of the Rockaways. Prior to his time in the Senate, Senator Sanders served as a city council member for the 31st Council Manic District, representing the communities of Laurelton, Rosedale, Springfield Gardens, Edgemere, Bayswater, and the Rockaways. He was elected in, 20, in 2001 and served for 12 years before being term limited out. Senator Sanders' passion for the public service and politics began as a young man. When working for then United States Congressman Reverend Floyd Flake, he engineered civic and community projects and aided in the, reval the revitalization, social, and economic opportunities of South so Southeast Queens. Senator Sanders is now the ranking Democrat on the Civil Service and Pension Committee. He also serves on the Commerce, Economic Development, and Small Business Committee. Banks Committee, Veterans, Homeland Security, and Military Affairs Committee, Committee, Cultural Affairs and Tourism Committee, to name a few. Above all the great work that Senator Sanders has done for his community, he has always been a champion for women. He has always advocated for women's empowerment and equal pay for women, fighting for us to be equally rewarded as, the, as men with the hard work that we put in on a daily basis. He has personally influenced my life with his positive, encouraging words that has always motivated me to be the best me. It is with great pleasure I introduce to you my boss, my mentor, a man who has believed in me when not many others do. All right. So we are here. My friends, you have made history just by being here. People have said that why on this planet would an elected official train folk to run against him? <laughs> I'm still trying to find that reason now. Maybe by the end of this we will know. My friends, I'm going to do two things with you, and then I'm going to, I'm going to get out of here, because this is your day and not mine, but I got to do two things. First, we're in the church, right? Yeah. Confession is good for the soul. Yeah. So you're going to hear a confession. Second, I'm going to invite you to a conspiracy. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We done set it up. But you got to always do homework first. I want to thank all the presenters that are coming up behind me. They are far better than I will ever be. I want to thank them in advance. I want to thank all of the women who are organizing. You see Lisa, but there's a bunch of women in my staff who have organized this. This is them. If you see men, we're going to be in the back. We're going to be serving the food. We're going to be at that front door taking people's names and stuff like that. This is your day. I don't want any of my women out there doing any of that. They need to be in here learning how to take over. Right. Uh, fellas, our time is out there in support of incredible women. And what better place can a man be? All right. I think I did that. I think I did everybody. Thank you all for anybody who helped us with the food. Thank you for whatever you helped us with. I thank you in advance. I have a confession for you. I'm going to tell you, but I don't want you to tell the rest of it. Oh, no, we're going to keep our secret. Politics, as we understand it, is bankrupt. Bankrupt. We've run out of ideas. You can see it on these streets. Absolutely bankrupt. Folk are parroting the stuff that we said in the 60s and the 70s. And we don't have a new approach. We've lost our way. Lost it. 
We need some new folk out here. We need them quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I'm just man enough to tell you what everybody else should have told you long ago. In your heart of hearts, you understood this. You see this. You feel it. You see the young people standing in the corners. Our fellas with their pants to their ankles. Our ladies with their dresses to their necks. You see what I see. You feel it. You feel the despair in the air so thick you could cut it with a knife, but the knife is cutting us. You see it. When I leave here today, I'm going to two funerals. Two funerals. One of a young man. Just started life and life is over. We have to find some way of addressing this problem. We need it bad. The leaders that you have are very good people. Quote me. Quote me. Very good people, but by and large, with rare exceptions. I get that's called a disclaimer. <laughs> I got to work with folk. I got to live with people. <laughs> with rare exception, they've run out of ideas. Can't figure this one. Now, it's not totally their fault, mind you. We live in a system. And this problem is systemic. The problem is bigger than all of these leaders combined. You're in a system that does not want you to move forward. And they're doing every single thing they can to make sure, I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. Quick example. Prison's population is going down in New York State. Sounds good? Yes. Prison are the only industries up in upstate New York, by and large. You close prisons, folk out of jobs. Mm. All right. Most vicious stuff I've ever seen. So what do they do? They increase the penalties on crime. Therefore, you stay in the cells longer. Not to be undone, they go a step further. Used to be you could go to a parole board, and if you got three out of five or whatever the number is, you're out. They made it unanimous. Vicious. We are in a game. This is a game that's designed for us not to win. If you play by their rules, you have lost. And women especially. If you play by these rules, you are going to lose as sure as you're born. Was it not Zora Neale Hurd who told you that? I didn't say it. She said that black women are the muse of the world. Read a book, The Eyes Were Watching God. Color Purple is a, almost a ripoff, but that's a different story. <laughs> Zora Neale's book, The Eyes Were Watching God. Get that passage. Uh, you will find some truth in there that, that will be most illuminating. So you've got to break the rules. If you play by these rules, you have, you've lost as sure as you're born. Absolutely lost. Got to break the rules. Now I invite you. Now you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do with that camera. I'm, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm in motion. Now I'm going to invite you to a conspiracy. We need a conspiracy of hope. We do. We need some warriors who are going to remember what it is like to think of suicide. We need some warriors who are going to stand up for those who are the victims of child abuse or domestic abuse. We need some warriors who are going to stand up and speak truth to power regardless of whether it is in season or out of season. We need some warriors. I got your vote, but I'm about to lose it right now. You ready? Oh, I'm about to lose it. But you know what? The secret is not simply estrogen. Yeah, I lost it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I lost it. The secret is not simply estrogen, nor testosterone. If you only want to do the same thing that the fellas are doing, but do it in, with a skirt or pants, then you're just as much of a problem as anybody else. 
If you don't come up with an alternative philosophy, an alternative economics, you are just as much of a problem as everybody else. The problem is not simply there are men. The problem is there's no vision. I'm glad somebody knows the Bible. There's no vision. But I'm telling you this, you're going to have to have a whole bunch of courage. You're going to have to borrow some. It is scary out there. You can say what you wish, but when you go in these rooms of power and these folk have it and you are sitting up there by yourself, you better know Allah, Jesus, Buddha, and you might want to know all of them. How you doing? You all right? I feel good. Actually, I feel real. So under those conditions, my friends, first let me give you a quick definition. I'm coming to an end. Your, your, your time is coming up. Y'all get ready. I'm just a warm-up. I'm just merely warming these folk up. The best is yet to come. Under these conditions, first I want to start with a definition. I know y'all got your, not only your thinking caps, but your writing pens, and some of y'all got your, your thumbs. Man, I tell you, we getting stronger thumbs and weaker minds. What a day we live in. You want to go against power? First things first, understand power. Power is the definition. Power is the ability to have your will accomplished in spite of obstacles. The ability to have your will accomplished in spite of obstacles. If you don't have it, do not get in the ring. Go borrow some, steal some, lease some, rent, do whatever you need to do, but do not get in the ring with powerful people with no power. You will be a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. <laughs> Everybody kicks the one-legged man. Isn't that true about your community? Wait a minute. I just said something about your community. Everybody kicks the one-legged man. Seemed like a passage, American passage. Richard Pryor made that joke years ago. He said that every wave of immigrant comes and first thing they learn is where it ends, and then they learn to kick you. Yeah. And then they make their way into America. Yeah. Mm, there I go yeah, thinking. Okay. Gets me in trouble. My friends, I know, I know, I'm, I'm, my time is up. I've, I've come to the end of everything that I could tell you here. But I really, really need some warriors getting into this ring who have some power. I encourage you to find Jesus personally. Amen. All right, I can't, I can't do that, right? Y'all going to tell, oh, yeah, I can't, I can't just hear you. I can't wait to report them. Church and state. <laughs> yes, it's a wall, but it's not a Berlin wall, my friends. Something should keep you straight. Yes. Uh, there we go thinking. Gets me in trouble. All right. All right. I told you we bankrupt. I told you we bankrupt. Mm -hmm. yes. Did you hear me go? Yes. All right. I told you it's not simply estrogen, right? Ooh, got to drink to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move over here. I'm going to be safe. You look like I could be safe over here, right? I wouldn't hedge your bets, sir. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's what I like about work. There you go. That tell you the truth whether it's popular or not. So under those conditions, my friends, we need some warriors. And let me tell you another secret. This is a sampler. If you think that just by taking one quick class, you're ready for the world. That's like going to that intro to karate and then saying you want to take on Bruce Lee. Just say no. So under those conditions, you're going to have to get more serious. Now, if I was you, I'd get to know them people from Boat Run, Lee, and all kinds of folk they up here. Come in, they running around the country, educating folks, helping women learn how to, how to run. I wouldn't let them walk out the room without knowing who I am. I wouldn't do it. So I am grateful for everything that's about to come before you. I am really grateful that you are here. My friends, I look forward to seeing you in struggle. I look forward to walking, not in front of you, not in back of you, but by the side of you as we tackle the beast. Yes. 
Babylon, whatever you want to call it. We got our work cut out and we have learned since the 60s that you can't beat this one by yourself. Men will never be free unless women are free. You're never going to get freedom by yourself. Can't happen. One great Chinese leader whose name I'm too scared to mention said women hold up half the sky. If the reason that the sky has not fallen down on our community is because of the women, I would argue. And going a step further, they seem to be getting tired now. So, ladies, all I can say to you is I, my, some original lines. I know you're fed up, but keep your head up. Some of us men wish you well. We're not scared of strong women. We're scared of weak women. We're not scared of you taking your rightful place because that will only put me, us, in our rightful place. So having said those things, I'm going to I'm going to hand the mic back. I was about to introduce a new friend who's going to te teach you how to vote, run, and lead. Man, not just one. <laughs> <laughs> one is bad enough. But y'all are bad. not just going to teach you how to vote. And that's part of the problem, voting wrong. Well, here we go thinking again. <laughs> then running. Last point of truth for you. There is a difference between running and governing. Most of these folk know how to run. They don't know how to govern. Govern is the, uh, governance is the act of bringing stuff home. Your streets are a reflection that folk don't know how to govern. Ooh, I said it. Half these people in here are going to report me, you know. <laughs> oh, y'all, well, report, spell it right when you do it. There's no U in my name. Sanders said it. And tell them if they didn't, if they want to get it right, come to my face and I would tell them personally. <laughs> because anything I say in the back, I'm not willing to say to the face. Mm -hmm. But if you could keep a secret, I'm trying to, trying to get along with folks. <laughs> Having said those things, my friend, okay, that's the camera that's going to make me look good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the magic camera? <laughs> there must be a miracle in there. <laughs> All right, Lisa. I thank you very much for everything. I look forward to working with you. Beautiful women whose beauty is only exceeded by their brilliance. Go on. Thank you, Senator. Thank you.